Hello and welcome to St Luke's with Molly once again. It's uh, always lovely to be to be back here, and welcome to also this service for the third Sunday after Trinity. The Lord be with you, and also with you. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the sign of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We call it for the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin, and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with him, he took them with they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who is this then? That even the wind and the sea obeyed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The saying, everyone to his own trade has always struck me as eminently sensible. I can't help thinking that Jesus may well have been following the same idea when he made himself comfortable in the stern of that boat and went to sleep. He was, after all, a carpenter, while Peter and at least two of the other disciples were fishermen, and so used to boats. As a carpenter by trade, Jesus probably thought that he could safely leave sailing, sailing the boat to them which is not to criticise the disciples for panicking when the storm blew up and began to swamp their boat. I've read in a number of places how quickly the Sea of Galilee can turn rough and dangerous. As fishermen, Peter and co. would have had a clear understanding of the danger they were in. They knew their trade. They also didn't know that Jesus was apparently capable of calming storms. Commentators have pointed out that on the whole, the Jews of the day, apart from fishermen, were not a seafaring people. For them, the sea could symbolise chaos and evil because of its dangers. The story of Jesus calming the storm can be taken not only as a rescue from a dangerous sea, but as a symbol of Jesus' power over chaos and evil. It's an extraordinary story on more than one level. With that in mind, and perhaps with memories of seasickness curse of the Irish Sea, I still have a certain amount of sympathy with the reaction of the disciples to the storm. It is true that Jesus said to the disciples after he'd calmed the storm, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Yet we should be careful to avoid 
taking from those words a crass interpretation of Jesus' understanding of faith. Faith in Jesus does not mean that we're protected from feeling overwhelmed by life or that we should never admit or feel doubt. Jesus did not expect that from his disciples or from us. If he did, he would be asking us to deny our humanity and our honest experiences of life. The events around his arrest and crucifixion make this clear. Jesus knew that the disciples would, would run away when he was arrested. He didn't blame them for that or hold it against them. In fact, he tried to prepare them for their fear and dismay in order to help them cope with it. Then in the depth of his agony on the cross, he himself cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In this way, in this way we know that faith is not a moral or spiritual test, and that Jesus did not intend it to be so. Faith is the bond that God holds us in, not what we hold God in. When Jesus asked the disciples on that boat, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? He held them in his love, understanding and sharing in their humanity and vulnerability. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? May sound like an accusation, but they are words of reassurance, as was his cry from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Would prove and the resurrection would show. God does not abandon us if we are brought to despair. God's love for us does not depend on us. Amen. And now let us pray for the church and for the world and give thanks for God's goodness. Lord, we pray for your church, that we may be sensitive in our care for the vulnerable and for those whose faith is tested. We pray for wisdom and humility in the face of life's hard challenges. And as we face further extensions of COVID restrictions on our worship, and our daily lives, we pray for patience and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your world and our leaders as we face the challenges of climate change and pollution. We thank you for the beauty of the world and pray that we may be ever mindful of its fragility. At this time, we pray for the people of Iran as they prepare to vote in their presidential elections. We pray for freedom and integrity in all elections and for those who live in countries where those values are not respected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our own land and community, we pray for all people whose lives and livelihoods have been affected by the extension of the COVID restrictions. And say now a prayer from the diocese. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all those who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are ill or troubled in body, mind or spirit. May they know your hope and comfort in their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, giving thanks for their lives among us. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. For the blessing, once again, I wish you well for the week ahead. Take care. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be upon you and remain with you all. Amen. All the best. Thank you. Bye.